And we're gonna go. Da, da, da. I don't know, that's my theme song. Da, da, da. Hi everyone. So I'm gonna zoom back here. So today we're going to do a much requested drawing. It is, we're gonna be using this as reference, if you can't guess, fish face. We're gonna be doing mermaids. But I like to make my mermaids a little weirder than usual. So wait, wait, wait. before you get any further. What? Who are you and what is this? Oh, right. I'm sorry. Who am I? My name is Steve Ellis. This is apparently arguments among children. No, uh, <laughs> no. This is uh, Monster Art School with Steve Ellis, and we're doing this for the next couple of months, as long as we're stuck inside, and maybe afterwards. And who are uh, you? This is Luna, my assistant and co-drawer. Yeah. <laughs> Co-artist. Um, and uh, basically. I'm an illustrator, cartoonist, kids book artist, or a kids book illustrator, um, fantasy artist, and of course the dog. That's our dog Blossom out there barking just for your enjoyment. Um, <laughs> yeah, I know. Well, so obviously we're doing things here. We're on the on the fly. So uh, as we do things on the fly, the thing we're going to do today is well, we are inspired by mermaids. Uh, someone said, we want to see mermaids. So I got my book called Fish Face. And I'm going to use this Fish Face. Ooh, look, turtles. This Fish Face book as inspiration for our mermaid. So first, but first, I'm going to talk about what we did yesterday. Okay? Just real quick. So yesterday we went over in the in this class. We did our... Goblin I Warriors. Goblin. So this was the goblin we did yesterday in this class. And you can see we did hand drawings and stuff like that. We're going to have to do a little bit more hands today. Wait, wait. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to aim this camera down so they can see the hand drawings that you guys did. Okay. Hand drawings. All right. Uh -huh. And we did that. And then everything we draw, you can go back to normal, normal camera now, hon. Okay. Everything we draw is based on... Do, do, do. Turn this around. Simple shapes. Our simple shapes are our cube, our cylinder, okay. our cone, cube, cylinder, cone, and, and sphere. the sphere. And remember, we draw little ants around each object so we know that it goes in three dimensions. We're going and, around and behind. And by ants, what you mean is like you're pretending little that an marks. ant is crawling across the That's thing right. so that you can describe the shape. Uh, yeah, we're, we're drawing... You. Don't bite me. I might eat uh, you. Yeah, that's not appropriate. It's because you're hungry for lunch. Yes. Yes. She wants lunch. She's going to eat her father. So we draw these little marks, these dotted lines, to give the impression that we're going around the object, okay? And we, when we're doing shading, we then also want to follow the object when we're doing shading as if we're drawing around it. But now, let's get on to working with mermaids. So... First things first. You have a fish face book. I do have a fish face book. I already talked about that. I know. So first things first. I'm going to throw my throw my drawing away. I don't know if you saw that, but there you go. And I'm going to get down to drawing. This is what I teach at university. I teach drawings of Here's stuff like that. Um, hopefully, <laughs> didn't know that was there. Anyway, um, we're going to draw here from... Our mermaids. Yes. So, now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to think about what we do with fish. And uh, what we want to do is we want to give the impression that this is a floating, kind of fishy kind of creature. And I imagine that fish go like this through the water, right? Right, Luna? So, I want to kind of have that sense. So, just like we were doing the... The dragon and the and the uh, and the unicorn in the past. We wanted to get. Let me see if my hand is up high enough. We want to get that swirling kind of sense. So I'm going to draw a circle for the head. Probably not as big this time. And then I'm going to draw. I don't have a big piece of paper. That's okay. You don't need to be. Remember, draw light, very light. Yeah, can I have and a then, ting? Uh, I don't know where the ting is, sweetheart. I don't know where the eraser thing is. You gotta go look for it. So we're gonna we're gonna draw that. Here's a then 
we're going to draw a second circle here. And so this one's going to be the head, and this one's going to be the chest and torso. And then from there, I'm going to go around and try to create some swoopy shapes, some swoopy fishy shapes. Hey, no eating on camera. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm going to bagel over here. All right, I'm going to pull in super tight so people can okay. see what you're doing here. Oh, they can't see? Well, I mean, they, they can see, but I'm going to make it okay. um, more about... All right, so we've got this. You see I'm making kind of this snaky, serpenty shape. I'm really using my whole arm to draw with, not just my hand like this. I'm really swooping around. And I'm going to do another one that's off the back of the head like this. Like, Oh, draw darker, please. It's hard oh, to see. Okay. Well, yeah, let me shut this light off because you might be able to see better because I'm drawing the same way. Is that better? Uh, only marginally. Yeah, okay. a little bit. Yeah. All right. Well, remember, you're supposed to just swoopy stuff in. I don't want to draw too dark too early, but I'll try. I'll try and get a little darker here. Tell me if that's better. That's looking a little better. Okay. Okay, so one thing that you're doing that's really neat is you're just doing a whole bunch of swoops. Yep, I'm doing a whole bunch of swoops because I want to get the sense of where my drawing is going to come from. And I really don't want to draw dark because if I draw dark, it's really going to cause problems later on. So I'm drawing darker than I feel comfortable with, but... For the sake of the camera. For the sake of the camera. But I wouldn't draw that dark if I were you. Well, for them, they'll draw this dark and it'll be the, what you want. What? Um, your, your drawing looks lighter on the camera oh, than it is yeah, in yeah. real life. So sure. if they match what you're doing, what they see in their screen, yeah, that's they'll true. be drawing at the appropriate darkness. So now the next thing we want to do is we want to look at, all right, if we're going to have her, the mermaid, because it's a mermaid, not a merman. Merman, dad, merman. <laughs> uh, to Zoolander for reference for all of you grown-ups. Um, I'm going to draw a crosshair on the face. Hopefully you can see that crosshair. Yep. All right, and that crosshair is going to identify where the eyes and the, no and the nose and the center of the face are, okay? And okay. then I'm going to go... I'm going to go in closer. Can right. you... Show that crosshair one the crosshair. more time uh, so they can. Yeah, right here. Oops, there we go. Right through there. And what does that crosshair indicate? It's going to indicate where the eyes and the nose and the center of the face are. So this is the center of the face this way, and this is the center of the face that way. So this mermaid is looking up. Yeah, this mermaid is looking up like that. There's the arrow of the direction of the mermaid's head. And then the mermaid's chest is going to be going this way. So we have to draw her neck kind of connecting the two. Okay? So the cross on that, the crosshair on that is going to be like this. You're not drawing, kiddo. Well, she's bageling right now. Yeah, I guess. Bageling. Sometimes bageling. kids need bagels. I guess. Oh, yeah. yeah. Alright. Now, we're going to mimic that same arc that we did around here, up here, and that's going to give us where our, where our clavicle goes. And the clavicle is the bone that's right across the top of your chest. And you can feel it if you push right underneath where your throat meets your chest. That's called your clavicle. And there's two points on either side. So, but we're gonna draw it. It goes all the way around from one shoulder all the way around to the other. And it separates in the middle here, okay? But that's important because when we know where the clavicle ends, we know where to put our shoulders. So I'm gonna draw circles to indicate the shoulders there, okay? And then I'm going to basically bring this circle down. And you can see we're starting to see like the top head and shoulders of a person. And then we're going to bring this down to here. And we're going to draw a third, a third bubble down here, like so. And that third bubble is where the hips would be. Now, this is a mermaid, and there's a weird tradition among mermaids to have hips, even though they shouldn't really have hips because they're fish people. But I don't know. It just seems like they look weird if they don't have the hips. So we're going to draw this in to indicate where the mermaid's hips should go. And then we're going to arc around that back to that original swoop that we created. The kind of... Hold on, pull the camera back because the camera oh. can't see. I pulled right. it so you can see the head right. and the hips. Okay. But we're going to... Pull back. Let's zoom back in with that camera, out with that camera. So yes, as we have our high technology here. So we're gonna. By high tech, he means I walk over and move the tripod yeah. backwards. High tech, 
wife driven technology. <laughs> oh, by the way, Laura Hirschberg says hi, Steve. Hi, Laura. How you doing? It's Laura, not Laura, right? Oh, sorry. Yeah. Oh, Laura. Yeah, Laura. Sorry. It's been hi, a Laura. long time. I hope you're doing well, Laura. So, I'm gonna be doing some swoopies around like this, following the line of that hip out like this, and then I'm gonna come around, and I'm gonna get that spiral in. And I like spirals, so. I'm gonna keep that spiral. I think everyone likes spirals. There's something nice and fun about spirals. So, now the next trick, we're gonna go back up to these shoulders here. Hey, Luna, since you're not drawing, do you wanna go check the computer and see if there's any questions? Because I just heard a ding again. And I wanna make sure that there's no questions. The next trick is we're gonna draw lines like this. And again, I'm gonna swoop again. Because I want these this, this mermaid to feel very swoopy and kind of fishy. So, and I'm probably gonna have this hand go like this, and then I'm gonna draw down like that. So one arm will come up like this, and the other arm will go back. And then what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna go about halfway up that arm. Uh, yeah? Heather and, Edmonds says, hi, I've drawn a lot of mermaid before as well, but actually this is her daughter, Isabella. Isabella. Okay. Cool, so that's great. So I'm gonna basically take the same distance from here to here, and I'm gonna create it there from the shoulder to the elbow, okay? So it's that same distance, approximately a little shorter. And then I'm gonna do the same from here to here, and that's gonna give me where my wrist is. And remember we did our cones last week, the other day? We're gonna start, we're gonna get these cones in here Remember the cones? I'm not cones, sorry, uh, tubes. I'm gonna draw tubes in here to do the arms. And then I'm gonna do the same thing here. This arm we're gonna have going away. So this one we're gonna have coming toward us. So we'll see it like this. These tubes, like that. So it's coming toward us. And then these ones are gonna go away from us. So it's gonna look like that. So I'm gonna draw a tube going away. Again, similar distance. And I'm gonna draw another circle here. And then I'm gonna do this again here, same distance, maybe a little smaller, because I want everything that moves away from us gets a little smaller. So as we get further away from us, we get a little smaller, and I'm gonna do the same kind of tube here. But I'm gonna make it a little bit of a cone, because I want it to come in towards the wrist, like right here, okay? And then we're going to draw a bubble for the wrist. And then we're going to draw kind of a squarish bubble for the hand. And squarish bubble, I mean basically a bubble that has a pointy top, a pointy kind of squared off areas up here. But it's still a bubble, okay? Meaning it's not a box. All right. So now we've got should have the basic can you see the whole drawing on there sweetheart luna yeah okay good so now we should uh, have the basics of our Dad. mermaid here what heather edmonds says you're glitching i'm glitching okay i don't know what that means so i don't know what to do about that yep i think um from here it looks nice and smooth so it could just be that wherever you are the bandwidth is a little bit slow yeah because there's may not a be million us. people online right now yep um so I hope that the glitching is okay. If you end up glitching out, I'm gonna put these all on YouTube. Uh, so now what I'm doing now is I'm cutting the bulb, the, the bubble a little bit back here to make a chin. And where I position that, someone's gonna ask me, where, where did you choose that? Well, that's a hard question to answer. Part of that is because I know that if the eyes are gonna be here, I want the ear to be here. So the eyes go like this, and the ears are gonna be about halfway in this ball, but halfway on the ball, because the ball's moving away from us, is gonna look further away. So if we looked at a ball like this, and we said halfway across the ball, it would be right there, right? But if we turn the ball around like this, this now becomes here, all right? So because of that, because of that, we're gonna put the ear here. 
and we're gonna put a flat line straight across like this for where the eyes are gonna go and we're gonna be able to draw the nose in. And the nose, the way I draw noses is I think of them like I'm drawing a wedge, like a triangled wedge. So I'm gonna draw, I'm gonna have a square bottom and then we're gonna have a keystone up here which is another kind of upside down triangle here. I think there's owls in the room. Okay, and then I'm gonna get a circle here and a circle there for cheeks. And I'm gonna get a circle for the chin. And then I'm gonna cut the face off. Ah! So that around this circle to the chin, I can make a cheek. Okay? And then I'm gonna draw around here to that keystone. And that keystone creates the upper side of the eye socket. Now we're gonna keep the forehead here. And then we're in the mouth is halfway between the bottom of the nose and the chin. So I'm gonna draw the mouth right about here. That's the opening of the mouth at least. And then the eyes, I'm gonna make the eyes a little bit bigger because I want her to be big happy mermaid. That, mer that, that smile is not, that, that mouth is not no. gonna stay that way. That just, she doesn't look happy at all. So that's gonna have to change. But that is just more of a mark of where it should go. Now that I've got the established where the chin goes, we can erase that chin bubble because that looks silly. And then we're gonna draw under the chin and then down the throat to the center of that, that spot we called the clavicle before. Okay, and now I'm gonna draw the mouth. What was that no for? What was that no for, Luna? I didn't say anything. You said no, like that. No, I didn't. Yes, you did. Anyway, regardless. So I'm gonna draw the ear in. Now the ear, if I were to draw a line around like this, the top of the ear, following the circle, the top of the ear is going to be t right about the top of that, and the nose is going to be right about where the bottom of the ear is, and vice versa. So we can measure that out. And then we have our mouth here. The mouth's going to be hard, because I really want to have the mouth being smiling and, and big. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw around the same circle shape, and I have my cheekbone circles here, and I'm going to bring I'm going to create kind of a upside down wedge shape here for a mouth. And we'll get further on that in a little bit. But right now, that's all we're going to do for the mouth. So there. Now, next thing we're going to do is we're going to draw a line there and a line there. Now, my mermaids. I don't want them to have normal ears because I think it's cooler if I imagine that they're more fishy than they are or, or at least weirder than we are. So I'm going to give my mermaid pointed ears because I just think that's cool. And I think if mermaids live underwater, yeah, they probably have mouths, they probably have but they gills, probably too. have gills. And gills would be right about on the side of the neck. So I'm going to do some gill lines down here to make her feel much more like she swims underwater or lives underwater. And I can draw some half circles in here to create the inside of the eyes. Now, I drew this here so I could draw the hair. Now what I'm going to do next is I'm going to, this is where my mermaid kind of goes haywire <laughs> because the hair is the hardest part. Not really. It's whether you want your mermaid to feel kind of cartoony or realistic. I'm going to give her kind of little mermaidy hair. <laughs> She's a little mermaid with gills. <laughs> and I'm going to draw a backward C and I'll line up 
along these triangles. If you are a mermaid, why would you have hair? Wait, what? It doesn't really make sense if you're a mermaid and you don't have any gills. That's true. And you have a really good singing voice. Because I don't know I mean, about you. Mermaids are kind of like. Mermaids are. 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 Uh, are similar to sirens. Well, yeah, mermaids, I think, come from sirens. Mythologically. And the sirens were, were actually not friendly. They were actually. they would scare people off. So all I'm doing now, is, I mean, I'm oh, sorry. They would, they would scare, they would pull people in to go drive their ships into the into uh, rocks on the cove. So now uh, I'm just kind of making my shoulders a little bit bigger so they fit the size of my head, and then I'm going to bring from the shoulders. I'm going to come down over the chest, and I'm going to put. A V here and I'm gonna say that my mermaid wears a shirt like so and so, then Dad. I'm gonna give her a uh, what so this is one of the this is a question okay quest from, away uh, Isabella okay Isabella what's up uh, she asked, is it okay if our mermaid is different? Of course. You can draw your mermaid however you want. I'm just drawing like... <laughs> That's funny because uh, what? this question was answered by Michael Brack. Brack. Oh. And he said, actually, he actually said, of course, draw however you want. Okay, Mike. Taking control of my class. No. <laughs> <laughs> No, but it's yeah. funny because you guys have said almost the same thing. Yep. Well, yeah, we don't, I'm not going to tell you how to draw. I'm just going to do how I draw it, and maybe you can learn some things about how I put the drawing together and not necessarily how I finish the drawing. Meaning, like, okay. these little things like using the ball joints and, the, and the, the, the shape, the basic shapes can really help you. But you don't need to make your mermaid look like my mermaid. So now I'm going to get the hand in, and I'm going to bring... Well, I'm going to get closer to the hand. Okay. And let's get closer to the hand. All right, that's pretty and good. And so Michael Rack just said, just try to help him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm just kidding, Mike. So I'm just basically going to continue that box I created before into almost a cone shape. And then I'm gonna. Though, so. Well, this was a boxy shape, and then I'm gonna do kind of a, a shape off the side like so. It was a shape. And then I'm gonna do that for one finger. I'm gonna do that for these two middle fingers, and then I'm gonna separate out that finger. And one of the things you want to make sure you don't Ooh, do is end up with have... sausage fingers. Shh. No, no. Let me talk. So sausage fingers are when you draw fingers like that. You don't want that. So one, the top of our fingers are flat. Luna. Tops of our fingers are flat and the bottoms of our fingers are curved. So I always draw them like this. Okay? So that there's a, a flattish part on top and a curved part underneath. And these would be the insides of the knuckles in here. See? So when I'm drawing them here, you're going to see they're going to look a little curved underneath and then they're going to come flatter on top. And then we have right here, we have the balls of the hand on the palm. And then we have this thing here. It's a fatty pad right here. And then we have our thumb pad, which is a big piece here. And that creates that shape. So now I've got my hand in. Now my, my mermaid's gonna have fins on her arms because I figure how better to swim with fins on you. And so I'm gonna put a fin over here as well, although you can't see that, so I'm gonna zoom back. Sometimes I have to be my own cameraman here. So now I'm gonna zoom back so you can see that I'm putting another fin there. And with this hand, I'm gonna mimic the same kind of thing 
I'm going to create that circle. And because her hand is inside, I'm drawing like that. So I'm going to draw this circle and this cone shape to get the fingers in. And basically these fins that I'm drawing here are kind of like curved triangles. And then I'm going to put, let's see, let's put a fin on her hips so it comes off of her back. And then as we curve back around like so. Yes. Yeah, what? Is there another Penelope question? asked, how are you so good? Uh, I do it all the time, Penelope. If you want to be, if you want to draw really, really well, you just have to do it a lot and then practice. Practice makes perfect. So I'm going to have this come behind and I'm going to make a, a fishy tail. And a fishy tail is just basically two triangles that are curved that come up like that. Maybe I'll put a little fin here and a little fin there just for fun. Now, so that's the basics. How much time do we have, guys? Um, let's see. Uh, we It's 227 right now. Oh, good. So now I can get into more dark lines. And now so, you can more inking. I'm not going to ink. <laughs> Why not? Um, I don't know. I think I'm not really prepared for that. Okay. But you know what? Maybe we should plan to do a couple of these where you do I mean, plan for ink. I think people want to hear about that too. They do? Okay. I didn't get that impression, but okay. Okay. Um, How is, let's ask the world out there. Yeah, if you guys want me to ink, let me know right now. By clapping. Wait, I can't hear that. <laughs> so, if you want me to ink this, I will ink it. Just you have to put out as many yeah. comments as I'm you I'm not can hearing say. any dings, so I'm just going to get to drawing. <laughs> you just have to get to say. So you can do this next process with a pen, or you can do it with a colored pencil, like I'm going to do. So I'm going to use my Faber-Castell colored pencil, but you can use a Prismacolor. color. You can use any kind of colored pencil. Wait, is this my colored pencil? Oh, is it? I can't tell. I think it is. Yeah. That's a colored pencil, all right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back in with colored pencil. Yeah, and what I do now is with the colored pencil is I basically choose those lines that I want to keep and I get rid of the lines I don't want. So can you see the whole drawing? I hope so. It's kind of light. I'm sorry about that. Maybe that helps. So I'm going to choose the lines up here in the face that I want to keep. So the way I do that is I go in with my dark pencil and I go in with my eraser. So I'm going to erase the things I don't want. Like, I don't want all these scribbly lines all over her nose. Good. So I I'm going to get rid of all of the scribbly lines all over her nose. I need it. Over here. Okay, and I'm going to keep the ones I do want. And if I erase something that I meant to keep, I will have to just remember where I put it. That's all. And if I erase something and I don't remember where I went to put it, then it couldn't have been that important. So. What I'm gonna do, yes? Is there another no, question? Not focus. Is it? Can you help me with that? Tell me. No, wa watch the screen and tell me what's going on. Is that better or that worse? Uh, I think it'll be better. Who said it was out of focus? I noticed. Oh, okay. So what I'm gonna do up here, and this might be, I'm gonna zoom in because I think. Let's get into the face. Can you see the face, Luna? Okay. But you gotta put it a little higher. How's that? Face. That good? Yep. Okay. So what I'm gonna do is see the a face I have here. I'm just gonna erase everything that was a scribble line and try and keep the ones that I darkened earlier. And this way, all of those emotional kind of swoopy lines that I was doing stay. And the lines I don't want, the ones I uh, the ones I want stay, and the emotional ones that are, are extras go away. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw this over and I'm going to put a triangle here and then I'm going to trace the bridge of the nose or the, the, the front of the nose to the the bridge what? Oh, well I think today we'll do ink another day sorry you came in too late I wasn't really prepared to do ink and I'd have to go run around and get my materials and I don't have them ready so Luna, 
I already okay. started with the colored pencil, please. Yep. So, so we're going to do this. We're we'll do inking another day. day where we're going to ink. And actually, if we give people a warning ahead of time, they can have their pencils and their their markers or pens or ink materials ready to go. Right. Just, and this is kind of just... Do inking, just this is pretty much what I do when I ink anyway. I just use a pen instead of a colored pencil. So I recreate the lines that I want to keep and I erase the lines I don't want. So I'm going to double up the line on my eyebrow. Okay. And then I'm basically, like I said, I'm retracing everything I drew already but I'm just being more exacting about what I'm doing with my hand. So instead of being all scribbly like I was before, I can choose. And what's nice is that if you, even if you don't erase those other lines, once you get darker, people start to notice those other lines a lot less. So here, this line in here is just for to kind of indicate the eyelid. And the shape of the eye that I choose to draw is kind of a an oval with points on the end. So it's got a point on one end here, and then the upper eyelid folds over. So you end up with a shape like this. Okay. So we've got that now. Let's get the lips in. Now the lips meet in the middle. So make a little triangle there. Then we're going to draw over the top of the lip at a curve. And then it's going to go under and back. So it goes over, under, and back. Over, under, and back. And on this side, because it's further away, it's smaller. So it goes under and back much faster. And then for the lower part of the upper lip, it's going to come across, it's going to go down a little bit, and then come across, and then meet up with that other line over here. And then we're going to draw the lower lip. Now the lower lip is funny. It's got a split in the middle, but we don't normally see that split. So we want to imagine there's two kind of rounded shapes in there. So we're going to draw around those rounded shapes like that and bring it in to here. And then where these meet, put a little bit of a shadow. Okay? And if you want, you can put highlights on these lips by doing, by drawing dark areas underneath them. And I usually tend to shade the upper lip because light generally comes from above and we don't normally see the lip well the lower lip is in shadow and then I want to draw in my pupil and my iris in the center uh, the pup the, the iris goes in the center wait the pupil goes in the center of the iris <laughs> I always get it mixed up And then, let's see here, we've got our hair, so let's try drawing the hair coming out like so. And again, I'm recreating the lines that I've created before, maybe adding a few, but nothing really brand new at this point. Just kind of recreating what I did before. So I'll add a swirly hair here, just cause. And I'll go and make that triangle into the ear. And I'll add another swirly here. And it'll be like a hair swirl because it's cute. Style. It's a hairstyle, like I say. And we'll bring this around. And then we'll go and we'll do the other ear. Tell me when I'm going off screen, Lena. Okay. Am I going off screen yet? No. Okay. And I'm going to say this mermaid has an earring. So I'm going to yeah. draw a moon for her earring there. Dad? Yeah? Uh, Isabella asked, do uh -huh. you do classes 
for the weekend? On the weekend? Not right now. Um, I haven't, I mean, maybe I haven't started yet. I, this is my first week doing it. And I only started doing it for the weekdays because I figured the kids were off from school. Now that everyone's off from school, maybe I will do it every day. Mm, I don't know. I probably do need a day or two off to kind of <laughs> breathe. Plan the next week. Plan the next week out, yeah. But we can talk about it. So I want to draw back down to the chin and then down the neck here. Can you guys see that or am I yep, running out of space? Okay. Yeah. And then we can get our gills in. Like I said, mine, my mermaid is a little bit more of a fishy mermaid. So she's going to have these gills. And gills have to have little separations on them so that they can catch air bubbles so she can breathe. And let me get this swoop of the hair in. So now we've got that. Now, I'm gonna do another line in here to show where the center of her neck is, her throat, sorry, is. And I'm gonna draw another line here to make this feel like it's three-dimensional. If I draw that, it feels like the chin is in the front and this is where the chin meets the throat. And then I can bring this in and we're gonna get that clavicle in I was talking about before. And we're gonna draw up and around for the clavicle, up to the shoulders, where suddenly, and draw a Y there, kind of a shape, to show where the shoulder comes out. Um, tell me when we're at and too far away from that. Um, just so you know, you can see all the way down to just past her waist. Oh, right down to here. Oh, uh, great. No, oh, a little higher. Like here. Right there. That's okay, the great. Okay, so now we were talking yesterday about overlapping objects, and this part of her arm will overlap this back part of her arm. So in order to show that, we're going to have this line go like this, and the line from this part of her arm fit in like so. And on the bottom, this line is going to go like that, and this is going to fit in like that so that we get the armpit in there. And the armpit is really all this area that leads us down the chest. And since I'm going to overlap the chest with the over the hips, I'm going to draw this now I'm going to, go down to here. You're going, that's where you go off yep, the page. Yep, yep. Okay. So I drew that line down and then in front of this far hip. Okay, and then I'm going to do the same kind of thing on the other side. So I'm going to draw this. Is, this area is called the deltoid muscle up here, the deltoid group of muscles. So I'm going to make sure that we see that. So that's this area here. And when I do a line here and a line here and a line there, it gives the impression that there's a whole shape there. So I can start to erase all that other stuff that's in there. So you can see it starts to look like they're three-dimensional. And then I'm going to draw under here. It's basically like you're making a lot of Y's shapes. Yeah, a lot of Y's and a lot of bubbles. And so I'm going to draw the outside of her, her uh, I, I can't, of her chest here, or the back actually, it's kind of her back. I would get into the muscle, but her lats are right here. <laughs> um, and then from here, because I know that the center of her body is here, I'm going to draw, if she had a belly button, it would be right there. But fish don't have belly but buttons. But fish don't have belly buttons. So that's just a mark. And then I'm going to draw this for the underside of her rib cage. Okay. The fish also don't have heads that are separated from their bodies or hair or arms with hands and fingers. So, you know, we're making stuff up here. Um, we don't know what, what mermaids, you know, maybe mermaids, I mean, do porpoises have belly buttons? Yes, they do. So maybe mermaids aren't actually fish. Maybe mermaids are porpoises. What do you think of that? That would be interesting. So mermaids are part dolphin, part, part person. So, okay, so we've got this shape here, and then we've got another shape back there. That's going to be the middle part of the arm, and that's another, remember we built that over a, a cylinder. 
And that overlaps this shape here that makes the third part of the arm like that. And each time it's this overlaps this, this overlaps this. And then we get to the back here where we, we can draw a line straight down the arm right to the tip of the finger, the knuckles. So we'll draw the knuckles right there. And let's get a fin on here. Now the fins are kind of neat because since she's a fish person, I want to look at my fins on the book here and see what fish fins look like. And what I'm seeing is there's lots of patterns on fish fins, right? I'm not really seeing a good fin yet. I'm seeing a lot of faces. I couldn't find my book with just fins. I found my book with just faces. So, you know, we're going to have to deal with just Here, looking for patterns. The but there's cool patterns like this on them, right? So I'm going to go and I'm going to say she's got cool patterns on her too. So she's going to maybe have a an angled, I'm going to take triangles and I'm going to curve them. And I'm going to make curved triangles there. And on this one, I'm going to do the same. Now they're going to be opposite because they're going to point in the opposite direction because one arm is forward and one arm is backward. So now with this, again, the forearm here, let me move this over to make sure you can see it. Forearm here is going to overlap that back of the arm again. And then the hand is going to overlap the arm. So we keep making these overlap lines here. Let me scooch over and get more of the hand. Okay. I was worried about that. That's why I scooched my page, page over. But how's it looking? Good? It's looking like a mermaid. Cool. All right. So now, let's see here. We're going to... I'm actually going to make the whole thing taller. Okay. Well, so don't mess around with it too much. How much time do we have? Oh, let me check the time. Because we may not have much time. It is 2.43. Okay. So I think it's time for super fast time. So... We're going to trace the inside of the hand. I'm going to trace this thumb and knuckle. I'm going to trace this around, making these fingers. OK, then we're going to go on the hip here, and we're going to choose that one line that we really like. And the dog is going to hit my hand with their wet nose, or hit my oh, elbow puppy. with their wet nose. Hi, dog. See that nice swoopy line? I'm gonna follow that swoop. And I'm just gonna keep making that swoop around. This is a big drawing, so. And then I'm gonna follow this swoop around. to make that fish tail feeling. And then I'm gonna separate it out here. The fish tails come out and in. Make a little triangle and then out. And make another little triangle out here. And then we can draw some of those stripes on here. Give her a little bit more. Look peacefully for a minute. I hope it's just someone's bandwidth and not for real. I don't know. I hope so. I mean, I have no control over the bandwidth issues, unfortunately. So, And then we're going to get to that far hand. So let's get that in so you guys can get this in. So I'm going to draw down around that part of the hand, and I'm going to put the thumb out like so. And I can just draw a line going out. And then in like this and then for the upper part of the hand I'm going to draw another kind of a triangly shape for that finger and then we're going to go down and create the other fingers in there whoa Way close to sorry there, so that was you. right in my eye practically so uh, I'm probably going to move back out again <laughs> Okay. So that was a, a, a momentary momentary lapse. So then we're going to give her a 
fin back here. I don't think she needs, maybe she does need the hip fin here and here. She'll have a fin on her back. And then let's get, every mermaid has to have long red hair, right? <laughs> <laughs> At least ever since the Little Mermaid. So I'll give her some swoopy hair to really make it feel like a fantasy mermaid character. And remember, every time I make my lines a little thicker, it adds a little depth, meaning it makes things look like they're heavier and they have weight. So if I go under a line and make it thicker, it makes it look like something's overlapping something else. So as I darken these lines, it looks like it's on top of her face. If I darken this, it looks like it's in front of there. If I darken this, it's in front of here. So every time I do that, I try to, I try to make a line a little bit thicker and a little bit darker to make things feel like they're in front of the other object. So it looks like you've got all of your outline for all the major things that you need for yep. your mermaid drawing. So I'm going to say this. We should probably challenge all your drawers out there to go and find... Here, I'm going to pull back so you oh, can see the whole thing. That's a good go idea. and find, find some good fish. reference to a fish that you like. Yep. Oops. Uh, hold on. I just moved back and it went out of focus. There we go. Okay. So find, find some good reference of a fish that you like meeting. Yeah. Find a book that has pictures of fish or go online and, and look up some cool fish. fishes. Yep. And then, um, you know, lay in some scales and some color. Yeah. At home. And scales, you can use triangles for scales like this, like we did with the dragon the other day, or you could use rounder versions of those, or you could just say, the scales are really small and I'm gonna do patterns. So maybe she just has patterns on her, like some fish do, like this. Maybe it's just patterns of color. So yeah, if you get a fish, go find a picture of a fish, you know, like this, and make some make some cool shapes, and try to make it look like you've got a fish creature on your hands instead and of just please a person. Please post your drawings. Yeah, post your um, drawings. Post your drawings here um, in in this live stream or post them on your own Facebook pages and yep. tag Steve in them. Yep, and the more people you tag, the more people get to have the joy of drawing, okay? So thank you very much for coming and drawing with us. Have fun today, have fun drawing, and, and I'd like to see some of these colored. If you guys can color them, that'd be amazing. And think about this too, maybe some bubbles in the water, you know, we could draw some <laughs> bubbles. Maybe there's some coral back here. You can get some crazy shapey corals back here. And really have your, fun. Your frame? <laughs> oh, yes. And the frame. Well, I think this one's watery. I don't think it needs a frame. Awesome. Okay. Have a great day, everyone. See you Monday. Bye-bye. See you Monday. Whew.